Okay, so what you have before you is just my simple layout, but I had added some filler text in here. Up here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an image in this header area. And what I'm going to do is add padding so the text isn't up against the edges here. Keep in mind when you add padding or you add margin, it extends the size of these boxes. And if you can remember when I set this up that I made each of these boxes 500 and the overall container, class container was 1000. So if I add padding, it's going to increase the size of these boxes and they're no longer going to fit in this thousand because a 500 plus 500 equals 1000. Okay, so we'll review the CSS designer. Okay, so the container, the width is 1000. The header takes on the attribute of the container. It inherits it. The navigation is inheriting the width. The section I made 500 and the aside I made 500. And the footer takes on the inheritance or the attribute of the width from the container. Also, as you can remember, what I ended up doing was I floated the section to the left and I floated the aside to the right. And then I told the footer to clear both floats, the floats on the right and the left, the section and the aside, and to move below them. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the CS Designer for right now. And what I want to do, instead of this filler text in the header, I want to put an image. So I'm going to flip back here to code view and I am going to get rid of this content. But I'm going to be very careful when I do that. I don't want to accidentally get rid of the header tag. So I'm hitting my delete key and there we go. And now my cursor is right here and I'm going to insert an image in the header. Now the image that I'm going to put there I've already created in Photoshop and the width of it is 1000 and the height of it is 300. Okay, before I insert the image here, keep in mind when I originally set up this header box, I made the height 100, but the image that I want to put in there is 300. The height is 300, so I need to change the height of this. So I'm going to open up my CSS designer and I'm going to change the height of this box to 300. I don't need to worry about the width because this container or this box is inheriting the 1000 width from the container. Okay, now I can see the box is bigger. I'm going to put my cursor right here. It's between the beginning and the end of the header tag and I'm going to go insert image and I'm going to look for that image. Okay, it's right here and I'm going to open it and there we go. Okay, I want you to notice when I preview in the web. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here. I want you to notice what happens when I preview in the web. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and preview in Firefox. Okay, when I bring it open, I want you to, to notice some default margins. At the top here, I have a default margin that the browser gives. I have a little bit of a margin here. I actually have some margin above the paragraph tag. So what I wanna do is I wanna strip out all these default margins. So when I actually add margins and padding, I don't have to fight with the defaults. And I'm actually going to type this in. So I'm gonna to go to my style sheet I'm going to go right at the top here after this gray text and I'm going to create a rule. I'm going to use the star and then I'm going to make a curly bracket and I'm going to drive the end of that curly bracket down and I'm going to type out margin colon zero semicolon. I'm going to hit the return key and I'm going to type out padding colon zero semicolon. Okay. Now when I preview again in the web, 
I can see that my text has moved out. All the default margins are gone. The margin at the top, the margin at the bottom of the banner, and any margin that might have been here or padding. So I'm zeroing them all out. So I kind of can start fresh and not have to fight with the default margins that you get with a browser. Okay, so what's happening here? The star of the asterisk is considered a universal selector. It basically or literally matches any type of element or tag. And what you're seeing here is the margin. When you only have one value, it means top, right, left, and bottom should all be the same. It's a shorthand. Again, the same thing for the padding. It's top, right, bottom, and left. Okay, You only need one value if everything on all the sides is going to be the same. If you don't like to actually write your own code here, you can also do that in the CSS Designer. So let me do it that way. Okay, so I got rid of it. You notice how the content is now separated because of those default margins. By the way, H tags, all the H tags have default margins and also um, unordered lists and lists. So you kind of have to get rid of them because you don't want to continually fight with them. Rather, you want to stylize based on your own properties and values. So let's do it in the CSS Designer. Okay, so I'm in the CSS Designer and I'm going to add a selector. So I'm going to click. Now Dreamweaver, based on wherever my cursor is, thinks I want to uh, do the container a side paragraph. I don't, so I'm just hitting my delete key and I'm going to type in the asterisk. It is above the 8 on your keyboard, so I'm going to hit Shift and 8 to get the asterisk. And I'm actually going to move this at the top here. So it's at the top of this list here. And then I'm going to go to margin. I know it looks like there's zero margin all the way around. There just isn't. You actually have to type them in. So you can click here, add your zero. And if you want to do it all the way around, you need to click on this little lock icon. I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to enter the zero, hit my return key, and then I'm going to click all the way around. Okay, if I look in my CSS code now, I can see that the margin is zero for top, right, bottom, left. For the padding, top zero, right zero, bottom zero, and left zero. And if you remember, if you just do margin colon with a zero and semicolon, it's the same thing. It's the shorthand for all the way around top, right, bottom, and left. And if you just have one value, it's for all the sides. Same with padding. If I type out padding colon, zero semicolon it's the same thing it's the shorthand if you just state margin and just state padding okay what i want to do now is add padding again padding would be extra space inside this box to move this text away from the edge keep in mind the box model when i add padding it extends the overall area that this box is going to take up so let me go ahead and do that. Let me open up my CSS Designer. I'm going to go to the section. Again, the purple is the section, and I'm going to add padding. I'll add padding all the way around. So I'm going to put 10 in here. Click on the little lock icon. And now all the sides have padding. But look what happened to the aside. It no longer fits up here because now the overall width of this box is now 520. And how do I get that value? It's 500 plus 10 plus 10. Either I need to change this to 520 or I need to subtract 10 and 10. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract it and put 480. When I do that, the aside snaps back up. Okay. Now I'll do the same thing for the aside. I will add padding all the way around. It no longer fits either because I have extended the size of that box. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make the overall, the overall size of the box 480. And it just snap back. Now margin also increases the size of a box. So let me show you that. If I go to the section here and I add margin, margin is the space between elements. So if I add maybe 10 pixels of margin, this box is no longer going to fit because this box is going to get bigger. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to do margin left of 10 and it no longer fits. Okay, so now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to subtract 10 from the overall width and then I'm going to make this 470 and it snaps back. If you click on your boxes you can actually see the padding that was added and the margin. Another thing that increases the overall size of a box is also border. So let me go ahead and add a border to my section. So I'll bring this over. I'm in the section and I'm going to go to border. And I am going to do a border on all sides. I'm going to choose a pixel width. And just to make easy math, I'm going to do 10 again. I'm going to choose a style of solid. And I will change the color to red. Hit the return key. Now if I look in design view, again it no longer fits because I've changed the overall size of the box. If I want the section and the aside to sit next to each other again, I have to subtract the border, the left and right border. They were both 10. So if I go back here and I go to the layout properties and I subtract the right and left border amounts. So 470 subtract 20 is 450. Okay, and everything snaps back. Okay, so keep in mind when you add padding, you add margin or border, the overall size of these boxes get bigger and you have to adjust your widths so everything can fit nicely together.